In the previous video, we learned how to paint over a texture and how to use brushes. It is critical to remember that once you have finished the painting, you must save the image or else you will lose your work. Essentially, we created a new texture in the shader. And this is a file that needs to be saved. This is the texture, which is now empty. As soon as I start painting, the asterisk appears here, indicating that a change has been made. We must therefore save the image to disk by assigning a name and a path. That way, when we open the project again, we'll have our texture to start with. We must now make the rust. To accomplish this, we must define a brush that includes a texture rather than just a color. Using the right-click menu, I first restore the default colors. We have the option of using a texture among the brush's properties, which is exactly what we need. So I make a new texture and name it. The texture is then assigned to a new slot. If we go into the texture properties now, we can create a new image. Therefore, click Open and select the folder containing the various textures. Among them, of course, is the Rust texture. We have a lot of properties related to the texture we just created here. We can then paint with the Rust image as a brush. Despite the fact that the strength is 1, the texture appears to have a low intensity. This is determined by the blending method used. Remember that we fuse these two textures in the shader using the Add Fusion method. I can change the blend factor to show only the rust, but in this case I also have the black background. To solve this issue, we must change the blend method, beginning with a texture with a white background. And we use multiply as a blending method. Unlike the previous method, this one considers white areas to be transparent. So, let's return to the texture and fill everything with white. The shader is then set to multiply as the blend method. Now I can paint, and the rust texture is visible. But that's not all. I can also control the intensity of the background by adjusting the blend factor. As a result, it is critical to select the appropriate blending method based on the circumstances. However, we can change the intensity of the brush stroke by adjusting the strength factor. We could, of course, have painted directly on the original texture with the background. However, we would have altered the original image in this manner. Working with layers, similar to how we would in a photo editing program, allows us to work in non-destructive way and thus have more control over the final result. Consider the following basic texture. Without creating a new level, I draw directly on this one. So we don't have the problem of blending between layers. We are, however, changing the background and we can no longer go back and change what we have done. Let's return to our texture. The brush strokes created in this manner are obviously inappropriate. They have an overly precise circular shape and the edges are too blurred. We do, however, have the option of defining how the edges should look. We get very sharp edges using the constant method. And we get this result using the smooth method. And the list goes on. The issue is that, no matter which fall off we select, we still have a brush that is too smooth. Instead, we need a result similar to the one shown in the reference image. So, a very uneven distribution of rust. To accomplish this, we'll need to use a mask to create a custom brush. Then, switch to Photoshop or another graphics application. Let's create a new image. In this case, I have created a thousand by thousand pixel image. The idea is to create an image that acts as a mask. 
This way, when we use the brush and blender, the shape will no longer be circular, but like our mask. Let's create a new layer. Select the brush and then open the window with the different shapes. The first thing we do is fill the background with black. The background should be black and the mask white. This can work as a brush. So, this is our mask. I'm going to export the mask as a PNG file. Let's go back into Blender and create a new mask in the mask slot. And then go into the texture section, which is what we see here. Now it's important to choose which texture we want to use. So we do not have to choose the rust texture we used at the beginning, but the new one we created. Let's open the mask we just created. Be aware that it may happen that the mask will now appear in the texture slot as well. If this happens, restore the rust texture in the texture slot. Delete the previous drawing. Now, the brush uses the mask we created, and so the result is much closer to what we expect. I can also use the F key to scale the brush, and the reference of the mask that we are going to use appears at the bottom. However, we have a problem. The brush is painting a regular pattern. So, let's delete it. And let's choose a different value for the mapping property. Now we have the right result. It is also useful to reduce the strength value so that we can vary the intensity of the texture. We also need to make sure that we vary the brush every time we paint with it. We can randomly change various properties such as rotation. But that is not enough. Each time I add a new stroke, it is also useful to change the size of the brush. So what we need to do now is paint the texture so that it closely mimics the reference image. And remember, the key to a realistic result is to avoid the appearance of repetition. The more imperfections, the more realistic the final texture will look. In the next video, we will see how to add more realism using other techniques.